So I'm from Massachusetts originally, um, and I'm still a voter in Massachusetts. I've never updated my license since I left. Um, and I'm going to show you, first I'll show you the app and then tell you how it works. Um, here is, so you can go onto my GitHub and you can find this there. This is a public number, anybody can call it. So the idea for the app was, you know, you call this number, 491-2262, and then we take it on speakerphone. I'm using HTTP console, which is a command line app to do send uh, quick post, quick delete HTTP requests to uh, whatever, you know, whatever HTTP resource you want to do. Um, and you'll see on here that if I do a, a post request to you know, my uh, root of my app, it'll give me a builder, which is my welcome thing. And this is what you just heard on the phone. So it's just, thanks for using Call Congress, we make it easy, and then we, they set, we send in a redirect to people. So we'll do a post on people. Um, and what that does is it will bring up, um, it'll take the zip code of the person who's calling in, go out to the Sunlight API, grab their legislators, and then spit out um, the names of all those people with a, a dial menu. So press one for this, press two for John Oliver, press three for John Kerry, whatever. Um, if you don't have a zip code when you call in, uh, the app will spit back a, we don't know your zip code, and they'll drop you into a uh, National Congress uh, dial in number. And the last thing is you press a button and it goes to a handler, which is called dial. Uh, so if I press one, it will go out to the API again, get the list of people, uh, and then match it up with what the user entered and then connect me to the, to the senator or the congressperson that I selected. Um, so interesting about this, the interesting thing about this app is that there is um, no data storage. So I'm, I'm really lazy. I didn't uh, save, I'm doing two API calls. So once when I give the options and another when I process what the user selected, um, just because I'm super lazy and I don't want to store, um, store that stuff in my app. So uh, the next app that I want to show you guys uh, is called Phone Lottery. And this one's a bit more interactive. So if you can all take out your cell phones, um, I hope everybody here has a cell phone. And there's beer, there's beer on the line here. Um, so if you want to get your cell phones and call the number here, call this number that's highlighted. So 
Alright, so it's pretty simple. It's just that, hey, thanks for calling, and then hung up on you. What are we doing? Um, <laughs> so now, now that they've all called in, I'll show you what this actually does. Um, what I've set up here is I'm using Data Mapper, which is super convenient for small apps like this. Um, I can just define a class called Entrant. So each one of you is an entrant, um, and you all have an ID and a phone number and an eligibility. So once you win, I won't let you win again, and I'll set that flag to uh, false. And then I have a validation in here that says you can only enter once. So uh, each entrant should only appear in, a, in the database you know, once for each phone number. So if you call again, you won't get entered again. So if you can keep calling, Oh, there's a lot of ringing going on. Okay, cool. So you're getting your SMS back. Um, so that's, the, that's why I um, just defined as the as the entrance, so each one of you. And then uh, this line here, data mapper .auto upgrades, which is really nice. Um, what it does is it sets up my database. Um, from up here, I have data mapper set up, and it has a um, my database URL from Heroku, which is like preset. Or if I'm running this locally, it'll just use an SQLite database. Um, and this auto upgrade line, what it does is it just actually goes and creates the table um, and it updates all the columns in the table for me. Um, so if I was to change this and add another field, it would just you know, automatically handle that and add a new field. If I was to take it out, it would you know, take out the field and delete all the data. So you have to be a little bit careful about that. But I don't have to manage migrations at all. Um, for really simple apps that I've been trying to just bust out you know, in a couple hours, this is really great to have. Um, so when you called in, uh, what happened was my phone number is connected to this URL. It, but it's just slash entrant, and that's handled by this handler um, right here. And it just says create a new entrant with your phone number, and respond with uh, the entrant builder, which is just an XML that says thanks for calling. We'll call you back if you win. Uh, we're going to skip over the host right now. Uh, actually, let's see what I want to show here. What I want to show next is account. So this is um, if I go here, I just hit refresh. I'll see that 71 of you entered, and the way that this works is you, know, you hit, do a get request on count, it figures out uh, how much there is and it returns a Haml template. Um, and then what I want to do now is I'll call the number. Um, so I, I heard that there was a prize to give out. Yeah, Alltrack has another gift for the winner of this one. It's a messenger bag. Okay, so there's a messenger bag and a beer for the first person, and then everybody else gets beers. So there's four more viewers to get out after that. Um, and I'll tell you how this works. Um, <coughs> what I've done is I set up a special number here. So I'm calling this number. I'm just going to I'll hold it up to the mic so you can hear what's going on. Make sure all your phone, your phone ringers are turned on so that we know who's coming. So just wait for a second and it's going to connect me to the first person who wins. And this is actually just running this winner handler right now. So it's collecting all the eligible entrants uh, and then it's creating a call to one of them and marking them as ineligible. Somebody over there answer? Alright, so you won the back. <laughs> So I just pressed star on my keypad and it hung up on him. And now it's going to connect me to the next winner. It's going to hit this URL again, the winner of URL. Uh, select an eligible person and then it's going to connect me to them. Alright, so I have four beer tickets to give away. <laughs> hey, you're welcome. Go get it. <laughs> All right, I'll leave that. I'll leave that there for a second. So the next person who rings gets a beer ticket. Um, so I'll step through here and grab your beer ticket. Um, so what's going on here is I'll, I'll call that later. I'll give the rest of the beers up. So you know, um, so what's going on here is it's going out to the entrance, grabbing all the eligible entrants, uh, randomly selecting one, and then redirecting my call um, to a 
uh, of piece of XML that will connect my phone uh, to the winner. Um, and now the next thing that I want to show you is uh, a little bit of stuff with rest on it. So let me see if I have this. So for all of you people who didn't win, uh, I created this other thing, which is called Losers. <laughs> so um, it's really a like, raw. I'll put it in here. Let's see. Uh, but what you can see is these are all the phone numbers of all of the people that uh, lost, so are still eligible to win, but haven't, haven't won. Uh, I'll just concatenate together. And the way I'm doing that is right here. Yeah, it's totally readable. Um, so it's going through, grabbing each one, and then just collecting them into an array, and then returning that array uh, stuff. I, mean, I can make that look nicer, but I'm lazy. So, uh, I'm also obfuscating the last two digits of your number so that you don't get angry with me. Um, but so that's pretty cool. But all I'm doing for that is I'm just going through the database that I already have and using Data Mapper. Um, so where am I using REST client and all of this? Well, if I wanted to do something interesting with all of your phone numbers, uh, like call you back, I could use the REST client to actually make requests out to uh, the Twilio API. And here's the call that I'm using, kind of hard to read here. Um, like I said, this is really dirty, but it's just uh, REST client.host, and then the uh, my account SID, which is an environment variable, my account token with an environment variable, the Twilio API URL, uh, and then the calls resource, my from phone number, my from phone number, and then your loser phone number, um, and then a URL that just says what to do when you answer. So if I go back to my app and I do a get request on call, let me just wait for a minute. This is everybody who didn't win to get a call now. <laughs> okay, it, it timed out on, on your but that's fine. Well, I, I also didn't win. <laughs> so I'll, I'll answer the call. Yeah. So sorry I didn't win. Um, so that you know that's just an idea of what you can do, you know, how, how Rust client works. It's really simple to use, just post. URL, and then at the end I just had my parameters, uh, so just a symbol with a hash. And I'm going to need to take that URL down right away. Uh, <laughs> you guys get that URL, then it's just going to make a very phone again. So, uh, uh, so let me get real quick. <laughs> It'll erase everybody's numbers. It's totally not secure. Yeah, go ahead. What's the overlap between this talk and the earlier talk on the app security? <laughs> <laughs> so, luckily, I, did, I, I built it so that there's no way to actually view your numbers directly. Um, they're all like obfuscated, so that's that's where I. Um, <laughs> yeah, let me take this down. <laughs> Maintenance mode. <laughs> Uh, you, can, you can turn them off now. You can turn the ringers off now. It's okay. Destroy app. Alright, so the app has been destroyed. So we can't do that. <laughs> Shut it down. Good job. Alright, so um, that's mainly uh, what I had to show you as far as uh, the main parts of Heroku, you know, Sinatra, uh, REST client, and uh, data mapper. But I wanted to show you a couple more tools that I find really useful when uh, building these kinds of apps. So one is called uh, HTTP console. Uh, how many of you have used this before? Okay, not that many. Because I only discovered this not too long ago, and I think it's really awesome. Um, so it's on GitHub. It's cloudhead slash HTTP dash console. Um, I think he does like a lot of, this guy does a lot of Node, uh, Node.js stuff. And um, basically what it lets you do is you can say uh, HTTP, HTTP console Dash console, and then a URL, uh, HTTP colon slash slash call, comma, 
www.heroku.com. And now I can navigate around the resources, so I can say like, you know, I don't have any resources defined in this, but I can say like slash uh, and like Congress people, people the correct. And now you see my my like um, my prompt changes, and I'm operating on that particular resource. I can operate on sub resources, so I can do like slash. So you'll see it just builds on, and I can issue a post request or, or a get request or whatever kind of HTTP uh, you know, get one. Right? So obviously there's nothing there, but uh, it's doing a request to that particular URL. And then it, I can actually, um, if I do like a post, so let's say I do a post to someone's do a little bit more correct, put one, it'll give me a It'll give me a uh, just a prompt, and I can actually enter in my parameters that I want to put onto that URL. So uh, it's really helpful if you use curl for this kind of stuff. This is just like a thousand times easier to use. Yeah, There's uh, also HTTP mod, which is very similar and inspired by this. Ah, uh, okay. Well, that's good to know too. I did not, did not know about that. HTTP Y. HTTP Y. It's HTTP Y. Uh, search instead of GitHub. HTTP Y. Uh, well, <laughs> 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 Google's auto correcting you. Oh, um, yeah. There we go. Cool. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's one. <coughs> one I to show you. And then the other one was um, for Heroku, uh, I just destroyed my app, so I can't do this now. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> what I wanted to show you was uh, they have a command uh, that uses taps. And it's uh, Heroku db pull, and then the name of you know something local like sqlite uh, local db. And what this does is it'll go out and it'll grab your Postgre, uh, your your Heroku Postgre database, and sync it to your local machine, uh, which is really nice. And you can specify any kind of URL adapter here. So you can specify a MySQL uh, database. You can specify a Postgre database that's on your local machine, and that command line would actually handle everything, pulling it from Heroku. Um, so that's all I had to share for the presentation, but if you have questions, I'm happy to answer them. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, the rank, <laughs> so the, the question was, if my phone never rang, do I get a beer? Uh, that's probably a timeout issue in my app, so you can have one of the beers. <laughs> so I, I have four left. Any more questions? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> no. do, you, do you have a do you have a real question? No. Anybody else? Yeah, in the back. Call Congress seems like magic. Are you a wizard? Oh, thanks. Um, no, I'm not a wizard. Although I wish I was. Uh, so the question was, or the statement was, call Congress seems like magic. Are you a wizard? No, I'm not a wizard. Uh, why do you say it seems like magic? I just wanted to ask you if you were a wizard. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to ask you. <laughs> we got someone over here with a question. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Um, could you uh, show, the only place I saw where you were actually calling out to Twilio in the, in the little apps you were demonstrating was on the uh, call action. Could you show like some of the other ones like where we call in and then it mm -hmm. plays back the response? Yeah, sure. Um, so let me do this. Uh, let me go to call Congress. So the only time I needed to make a call out to Twilio was with the Rust client, was uh, to make the outbound calls. So to initiate an outbound call, I had to hit the API uh, actively and set, like, <coughs> to use my account token and my account sit, and use my authentication to make sure that I had the rights to do that. So how did inbound uh, calls? But inbound calls don't actually need any authentication unless you want to have uh, like authentication. So if your app is logging the stats or something like that, um, you'd use uh, request signing. So you know that the inbound request is coming from the Twilio API. Um, and you could deny all other requests. Um, but the way that works is, let's go to, let's go here. So, call Congress, and I'll do a post request to just, there. and so what happens is, in my Twilio account, I have a phone number called Call Congress. Uh, I'll zoom in on it. And you'll see that it has a voice URL associated with it. And when somebody calls this number, what happens is Twilio makes a request to that URL. Um, so you'll see here, this is us making a request to that URL, and you'll see the response. And it's just plain XML. 
Um, so it'll speak to you, and then it will redirect the Twilio API to the resource called people. Um, so if you want to uh, post. I'll get no, nothing back because I'm not sending the appropriate parameters, but uh, here's, here's people. So what it does is it, um, it expects a from zip uh, parameter, which will go into the Sunlight API and look up the, the appropriate people uh, to call. Cool. So you just need XML templates? Yeah, you just need XML. So I just use Builder. Like, really, it's just you know, Builder. <coughs> and I can show you those templates. For you. It's just really simple. So uh, welcome is just this, and then the people one is uh, for each one, for each person that I got from the Sunlight API, uh, speak their name and the index plus one, press one, you know, so it's right, press zero, press one. Um, and then when you press the button, um, another request is made to your app with the button that the person pressed. Uh, so I can um, dial. Um, right here, it's taking the param called digits, which is what the user pressed. So I pressed one to get to John Kerry, and it's just looking it up in the index of people. So it's uh, it's a little bit sloppy because if the API returns the results in a different order each time, it would break, uh, but it doesn't. So cool. Yeah. Go ahead. Do you have irrational fear of string interpolation? Uh, no. <laughs> Why don't you use it then? Excuse me. Why don't you use it then? I just wrote this in like an hour. Okay. Anybody else? Why do you, uh, what's the benefit of REST client over this utility to be libraries? I don't quite get it. So the question was, what's the what's the uh, benefit over REST client versus other HTTP libraries? Yeah. Um, so REST client, uh, I use it just because it's like super simple. There's nothing to it more than, it, it follows like the, just REST client dot post, and then you post your parameters and your URL. That's like all there is to it. I don't need anything more than that. Um, there are also gems for doing this kind of stuff. So like each API, like Sunlight for example, has a, a gem for its, for its API. So I can just download the Sunlight API gem and say, you know, get me the members of Congress. But if there isn't a gem for the particular API that I want to use, I'll use REST client. Any others? If not, I think that's, uh, that's all I've got. <laughs>